So this portrait that we're looking at is by August Sander, German photographer. The portrait is titled Secretary at a Radio Station, Cologne, and it's from about 1931. Now, let me see if I can remember this, because it's been a long time. Sander was, he was trying to create these, these photographic sort of perfect representations of types of people or types of occupations. Is that right? Exactly. Almost these sort of platonic ideals. I don't know if they're platonic. I think you could refer to them as er forms or original forms. I okay. think he's interested in looking at people in Germany as of particular occupational or professional classes. So those are types. There, there are a lot of different things that can be drawn from this. So it's not a physiological Well, it's related to physiognomy and who people are in terms of what they do. Okay. Is this related at all to the physiology that the yes. French did in yes. the mid and 19th century? And Yes. I mean, Sander did not have strong theories about one type of person looking or, or necessarily being better and more pure than another. That was, really wasn't his project. He was trained and worked as a portrait photographer in the early 20th century and this portrait is 1931 so for a number of years he was doing straight portrait f photographs being paid for them in his studio okay. and then he becomes more interested in a kind of clinical gaze. In so like saying that a person's occupation actually forms their physiognomy in a way? In a way, yes. I mean, if you look at somebody's hands, right. Um, right, a worker, a farmer, for example, would have hands that look much different from um, uh, an accountant's hands. And perhaps the way that they hold themselves, the right. kind of dress they, they carry place themselves, themselves in. So it's the entire sort of representation of the, of the person. Right. It's sort of a, it's, he's trying to get a complete picture and sort of look at these connections, like how do we hold ourselves and how do we present ourselves and it is about sort of public persona because it's profession. So can I ask mm -hmm. a, a sort of a, a technical question? What year question? is this though? This is 31. 31. So um, this is sort of his type of secretary at, at a radio station. Would he have photographed a whole series of secretaries and then looked for one that was most ideal in some way? He did a series of women. Okay. And so then there are different types of women. That are, like what? Well, farming women, women that are artists, there are professional women, intellectual women. This is probably a... Lower middle class. Lower middle class, or it, sort of a new salaried yes. woman. Salaried that, woman. That it's, new threatening... It's, it's exactly. I mean, she is the new woman, and she has all the trappings of that so archetype. Did that, he do a series of men? Because there's a kind of long history of in photography, going back to Munby, of men photographing you know, women and, and looking at different types of women and especially fetishizing working class women. Actually, it goes before that's photography. Not, before, I mean, think, yeah. Think yeah. back to Degas. That's, think back to, well, well, that's not before photography, but, right. but I mean, just this whole notion right. of the, the scintillating quality of, of the... Right, the working uh, uh, right. woman. Yeah. He had, I think, a wider gaze than that. He's looking across professions. So he has a couple of books and exhibitions that come out in the 20s and 30s and um, the one that was published in 1929 was called Faces of the Time oh. and that was a collection of 60 photographs and it was intended to be... Is it men and women? It is men and women, yes. It's, ah, it's okay. you know, faces of our time in general and it organizes people by class or, or by occupation and so he starts off with farmers he began to take photographs of all these farmers in the Westerwald region in Germany. And that's kind of where he, he came up with all these different kinds of farmers, like young farmers and old farmers and big, huge families of farmers and farmers that are rich and farmers that are poor. He's looking at it really as a kind of scientific project. Sociological. Just, it's a sociological, anthropological study of all these. And he feels like, especially in the 20s, like to make sense of the changing German culture, right. And to make sense of all these different new things, new different types of people that are appearing, you know, one way to kind of make sense of it all is to try to organize them. It's almost right. a kind of documentation. Categorize it's a it. huge project of documentation. It's very German. In a curious way, it reminds me of the Bechers later. Yes, well, you know? the Bechers come out of that. Yeah. In because, what way? How does it remind you well, of the Bechers? This, this notion of really trying to document and understand through a kind of almost encyclopedic... It's exactly coming from this exact kind of imagery. The Bechers are looking at Sanders project and other German photographers of huh. this period. Um, that idea that you're constantly looking very closely, um, clinically at, you dispassionately. know, dis dispassionately. But 
you know, that, that so reminds me of a kind of 19th century positivist tradition of, you know, sort of scientific categorizing, you know, species and, you know, yes. putting things yeah. in category. And it comes out in how he organizes everything, but he's not going about this as It's a, not moralizing. It's not, no, he's not way. specifically moralizing. And so fact, which makes, it makes this project more modern yeah. because that yes. is not and, there. And it's also, I mean, it may be... A, and also a, artistic. That's right. true, but and there may be a thin veil of it, but but nevertheless, he's hanging on to well, a Well, let's kind of look neutrality. at some of the other ones. Well, there's great. I mean, this oh, pastry fabulous. chef. And this is, is maybe a little bit more telling about the idea that it's a profession, that mm -hmm. he's, he's of a specific profession, because you see him with the tools of his trade. The image we looked at before, that the new woman has tools of her trade, but they're a little bit less obvious. So he has his outfit on. He has his pastry chef, the white jacket. Are they often shot in this way, like straight on? Yes, um, mostly full portraits or three-quarter mm -hmm. length. They're, I mean, at least these two are both somewhat confrontational. The subjects generally look directly at the camera, um, and they sort of have that kind of um, dialogue with the photographer. And it's often very, you know, like there's some sort of pride. They're not, um, you know, they're, they're sort of presenting their public selves. It's, it's hard to read. There's a kind of mask, a kind it of is. professional mask. It is. It's a mask, professional mask that you sort of take mm -hmm. up. Um, but, you know, he's sort of almost like paused in the middle of something, but it right. also looks posed, right? Saunders definitely posing him. He's got light set up in a certain yeah. way, um, you know, that it's really contrasty. It brings out the white of, of his jacket, mm -hmm. um, and then there's sort of silver, and there's sort of the gleam of yeah, the bowl. Yeah, and, and it's also so carefully composed, these lines of bins or whatever they are that sort of come and meet toward his head. Yep. You know, it's it's drawing our attention to his face. You know, it's it's you know that diagonal line of his hand going toward the corner with the with the spoon. And his body takes up a significant amount of space within the image. It's right? really a beautifully composed image. It is. His yeah. portraits are even more striking because of that. Here's another one. What's this one called? This is called Disabled Man. Mm -hmm. So this is really only a or few years after the end of the First World War, and and disability exactly. was incredibly public, right? It was, and this I always think is very striking and mm. I, I kind of uh, an ironic portrait. Yeah, he's, right? he's, he's, he's in, in front, front of, of the, the stairs, stairs, right? And he's not really sure if he has legs or what right. part or leg of his legs are left. So he right. doesn't have prosthetics. Likely he has this kind of half wheelchair sort of cart thing, mm -hmm. you know, and he sort of gazes out uh, perhaps a little... Reproachfully. Reproachfully yeah. at yeah. the photographer. Yeah. yeah. But it's also, again, just a, a lovely composition with the mm -hmm. diagonal line of the stairs and the... The perspective is yeah. really striking. Yeah. It, it really sort of yeah. brings your attention. I mean, you can't help but look at the stairs and then look back at the figure right. yeah. who's... Well, and there's this really interesting sort of mix between the tragic and, and the beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it, you know, it, it really makes it an enormously sort of powerful combination. And, and there's a, an attempt by the subject to retrieve a, a, a degree of dignity in his posture, in yeah, his, he's in upright, coat. and he's mm -hmm. he's staring straight out at the photographer yep. as well. And I like that kind of confrontational look. He's meeting our gaze, and he sort of looks. We f I feel like he's. I'm looking right at him um, mm -hmm. when I look at the image. And at his he's level, very present, so I, you mm -hmm. know, very the, alive. the photographer was down. It's and it's not looking. It appears it's not looking down, at, not him. Looking right. down at him, even though he's at a lower level. Um, we've assumed a kind of crouch, mm -hmm. um, so that we're looking across. At least that's what the orthogonal seems to suggest. Mm -hmm. right? I think his arms are up. He's not slouched. Yeah. And he's, you know, there are other disabled war veterans who had these little carts that were just basically like skateboards, and they would push themselves on the yeah. ground. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can see a lot of those in paintings of the of the early 1920s. But this is somebody who the public might have tried to avert their gaze from. And well, that's to, and the put, problem, and but to, yes. And to put this person sort of front and center in a photograph as a subject of our gaze is a, is a pretty powerful. Well, and I think, you know, knowing what we know is going to happen a few years from this, yes. you know, that, that people who are disabled in, in all sorts of ways are, you know, the be Nazis dis yes. try to, you know, destroy that image of the imperfect right. body. Yeah, right. I think it's that the sense of this is in the public. What what do they do with this kind of person? That you know, you sort of put push them away, push them off to the side. And I'm, so I'm not trying to make Sander out as some right. sort of. It's um, not the first it's image. It's not the first image. It's not with sort of more heroicized farmers. Right. It's not. He's not with the intellectual types. He's sort of. Mm -hmm. You know, Sander does. He does turn his camera on all different. So this is People part of that in society, but quality. it is encyclopedic. Yeah. But you know, he's probably in a similar 
section as the unemployed. He's not sort of held up. What's interesting to me, though, is that if this image had been, you know, filled more with pathos, you know, if it had been more pitying, more emotional in some way, Sander might not be part of the modernist canon. Right. Right? It's this kind of detached gaze I th- that's yeah. so much of a part Absolutely. of what modernism is. And as soon as sentiment enters into it or manipulation in some way, it's not, you know, it, it blurs that line. Right, because I think. the narrative is inserted then in a very right. direct way and then and the modernist aesthetic um, rejects this. Right. You know, which what's, is weird. But what's interesting thing. is that is that there really is a narrative here. I mean, this man is, and and the wounded are really a representation of Germany's failure during the First World War. Their loss, right? Or at least that's how we're reading it. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, how yeah. I mm-hmm. always look at it um, as a disabled man from the war. The war, yeah. and now he could be disabled from from something of else course. entirely. Right. Um, but, but just so that image, image. There were so many right. images that it just sort of becomes becomes symbolic of that. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that Sander did that was that was great was, was use this sort of clinical scientific gaze where he sort of kind of wanted to organize all these images. And it kind of brings out this tension between science and art that I think is really, really mm-hmm. important in photography. And it's that tension that I think makes the images so wonderful and so striking that you really look you know, at this sort of stark image that doesn't seem coded with sentiment, yet also has, you know, sort of conventions of beauty and, right. um, and photography itself and is f- scientific yes. in some way. Right, and there's still, you know, sort of the chemical. The mechanical. Mechanical, right. and I think um, one of the things that Sander was able to do and one of the reasons why he started creating these images is that he accidentally printed on a different kind of paper in about 1920 and it really does make a difference you know like the kind of paper that you print on when you create a photograph now we have digital images and we print on on you know anything anything really right uh, really you know that this kind of image versus um, a carbon print versus gum bichromate print versus you know any other kind of earlier photograph those are much more sort of fuzzy they're blurry it has a sense of the artistic or the pictorial yeah. Yeah. Right. once you start printing on paper that has um, more neutral tones or even cold tones, it takes on that kind of scientific documentary, documentary gaze so that you're looking at things and they see more objective mm-hmm. and they kind of take up that guise and whether or not they are or not, we end up reading them in that way. In that way. But they also, for photography, might have functioned in some way, I guess this is a question, did they function in some way as a way of divorcing photography from painting mm-hmm. um, and in a sense giving photography a kind of autonomy, mm-hmm. a kind of aesthetic autonomy, maybe with allied with science, that really finally brought it away from those pictorial traditions yeah. in which it had been embedded. That right. was, I think, really exciting for artists, photographers in the 20s. The idea of the new, that photography, that was yeah. one of the reasons it was so appealing, is that it's a technology of modernity. It's of the right. new, it's of science. It has nothing to do with, or so they, they wanted to think, of painting and of the old and of traditions mired in, in the right. past. You could really create from it something entirely, entirely new, new and of the modern Except era. Except that all the vocabulary that yeah. we've been using is embedded in the history of art and yeah. the history of painting. Because what makes an image successful is just what makes an image successful, successful. in a way, whether although, we're what we're looking at. It's true, although embedded in its own, in its own sort of technological and history. historical moment. Yeah. Yes. What a terrific image.